Hi everyone, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a program manager at Microsoft for Azure Edge and Platform. And today I'm gonna to talk about something I'm very excited about called the Azure Adaptive Cloud Lab Kit featuring the Arc Jumpstart. They're gonna talk about this little guy right here uh, and how you can use it as a simple, very easy deployable home lab to try out all the hybrid cloud and edge computing features we have right there. So let us talk a little bit about why we are actually doing this. Now, if you're like me, you try out, you wanna try out the latest and greatest technology. And if you're dealing with just Azure stuff, for example, uh, this is great because you can get an Azure free account and try out things and deploy it and you don't need any hardware, right? But when it comes to you know, these hybrid cloud and edge computing scenarios where you wanna connect your on-premises environment with the cloud, um, with your edge locations and things like that, it's good to have some sort of a lab, right, uh, as well, which you need to have something physical, some sort of hardware. And I was looking around for a lot of different types of hardware, and obviously the Intel NUC series, uh, which kind of like got discontinued, but then Asus picked it up and some other hardware vendors are also producing devices like this, um, is actually a perfect solution. So it's very small, it's very power efficient, um, still can hold a lot of memory, uh, 64 gigs, the new ones even, even more than that, um, has a good enough uh, CPU uh, and produces almost no noise, right? So this is a perfect, for me at least, it's a perfect device for a home lab. So I can store it somewhere in the living room, underneath my desk, wherever, without having a lot of distractions. And it can still host some great workloads right there. So the Azure Adaptive Lab, uh, Cloud Kit really is coming with like, is actually a Intel NUC or Intel Asus NUC in this case, um, where we put in some hardware and I will show you the specs in just a bit. Uh, it comes with obviously a couple of different ports here for HDMI, uh, USB ports and so on. Uh, and also a 2.5 gig Ethernet adapter. Um, again, uh, when you run this as a lab, you basically run it like without connecting almost nothing, right? The only thing I connect is usually the Ethernet adapter. Uh, and the power adapter. Uh, and after that, I basically leave it alone, uh, except for the deployment part where I obviously need a monitor for this. Um, so great little device um, for actually for a home lab. And we're gonna talk about a little bit what the Azure Adaptive Cloud Lab Kit featuring the Arc Jumpstart is uh, in just a bit. So again, to have this lab environment, usually wanna run some sort of virtualization. And in this case, we're gonna use Windows Server uh, 2025 Evaluation Edition, which you can then install on this, and then we can deploy various workloads such as VMs, Kubernetes clusters, and so on, and then connect them to Azure to actually do the management part and try out different scenarios. And when we speak about scenarios, that is where especially the Arc Jumpstart comes in. So let's have a quick look on how you actually can use this and set it up and what it can run. So here we have a quick architecture overview, right? You can see here on the bottom, we have the hardware, which is a NUC device in this case. And then we installed Windows Server 2025 on top of it and enabled Hyper-V to then run virtual machines, Windows and Linux virtual machines, as well as for example, AKS, uh, our Azure Kubernetes service, Edge Essential, uh, which you can run on premises uh, and then connect it to Azure. And then this all gets managed through the Azure control plane. Um, and now you have basically your lab environment set up. And on top of that, you can now use um, the Azure Arc Jumpstart scenarios, for example, which allow you to quickly test out specific Azure Arc features, such as connecting virtual machines, um, deploying Kubernetes clusters, managing Kubernetes clusters, using the unified operations um, to manage uh, all sorts of different applications and so on, or deploy data services on top of it. So many, many different things you can try out um, using the Arc um, Jumpstart. So this is absolutely a great way of um, deploying these, these, these things. So let's quickly switch how you can get started with this, right? So what I recommend, um, you go to the uh, Jumpstart website, and it's arcjumpstart.com, for example. Um, and you can basically find here on the website, you can, if you scroll down, you can now find here um, Jumpstart Drops, uh, which you might be familiar. If not, there's some great series about Azure um, Arc Jumpstart Drops there. Um, but again, this lab guide or this, this adaptive cloud lab kit, we basically published as a Jumpstart Drop as well. So if you click on this, you can then find, if you scroll down, multiple different things you can do, which is, has been written by the community, um, for the community. 
Uh, and you can also find the unofficial Azure Adaptive Cloud Lab Kit um, featuring the Arc Jumpstart here. So if you click on this, you will see here some additional information. We can zoom in here, uh, what it is, some explanation, what you can try out, what services you can, for example, test. Um, but then you can also find, for example, a getting started guide, to, which explains exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, we also have some prerequisite lists. So what do you need to actually do this? In this case, again, obviously you need the hardware for it. You basically need to download the Windows Server 2025 evaluation version. You need to have a USB drive basically for the installation an Azure subscription. Um, again, you can also create a free Azure subscription as well. You will need to have some internet connectivity, which is basically a wired connectivity uh, there as well. And then there's some description of, for example, how the hardware could look like, right? But you're free to choose whatever hardware you want in this case. Um, there's just some minimum uh, recommendations here of what you need. If you have like stronger servers, <laughs> that's fine as, uh, fine as well. But again, you can use that here as well. And then there's an installation guide, and I'll not go through this a little bit uh, in just to, uh, to show you this. Um, but so if you look at this, there's actually a step-by-step -step guide how to get this up and running. Um, and there are some things needed. For example, um, these Intel NUCs, they come with Intel chipsets, but they don't ship a certified drive for Windows Server, right? If you're running Windows 11, that's fine. Um, but if you're running Windows Server, that's not really certified in this case. So there's some workarounds how you can install these drivers. These are documented here. And then there's also like how you then basically set it up, how you install Hyper-V if you haven't done that before. And then also how you connect your device, for example, to Azure Arc uh, for the first time uh, as well. And as I meant, much, much more. More importantly, you will also get a list of uh, links to the different Arc Jumpstart scenarios, which you then can try out. So even if you want to tie out, for example, some Azure IoT operation scenarios, uh, you can find the links directly uh, here as well. Now, obviously, if you want to work on this guide, we can also just jump to the GitHub repo. So if you click on this um, link, we will actually come out to the Adaptive Cloud Lab Kit uh, repo, which is hosted on GitHub. And again, this is a public community, um, uh, basically scenario and drop. And so if you want to co contribute to this, you want to make changes, you want to add certain stuff as well, uh, feel free to do so. So if you scroll down again, this is what we just saw on the web page. Again, we got a lot of description here. Um, and then you again have the link to the, uh, or a picture of the architecture as well. There's some good things to know. So just important, this is just for evaluation, right? This is not thought for production purposes in any way. Um, uh, and it's also not a supported thing, right? It's community supported. So it's really best effort on what you can do with it, but it's not something Microsoft in this case would support. Um, so just be aware of that if you want to put this out. So again, going through the different um, system requirements here as well, and then the different links, for example, where do I get Windows Server 2025 evaluation version? Uh, where do I get the free account and so on as well. And then you get into the installation of this little thing. Uh, again, uh, there's a description on how to install Windows Server 2025, creating a USB thumb drive, right? Uh, again, you can use also like if you use other tools to create these thumb drives for the boot and installation, feel free to use those as well. But if you're not familiar, you can just run, for example, this PowerShell script here, uh, which will create you that thumb drive. Uh, and then here is like how you install this network driver, right? Where you basically download the Windows 11 network driver um, for that machine. And then you make sure that um, basically you can, can select that network driver and tell Windows Server to accept this, even though it's not certified. Uh, for that um, again. So there's some description on that. Uh, some additional steps here with like renaming uh, the lab kit, setting up Hyper-V, and then again, you can use, for example, the wizard, uh, which we ship with Windows Server 2025 to directly onboard that system uh, to Azure Arc, to your Azure subscription, um, and then it will show up in the Azure portal. And I will show you just in a bit how that would look like and what you can do with it. So after I've all done the, all that, you now have a little lab box um, basically ready for you to use where you can run virtualization workloads, you can run your uh, Windows Server or Linux machines, your Kubernetes clusters, all the things I just mentioned before uh, and try out these things. But 
If you even want to get faster, right, I highly recommend to have a look at the jumpstart scenarios um, for these different things. So if you're um, scrolling down here a little bit, you have direct links to these different kind of things, right? So if you want to dive into, for example, Arc enabled service, you can do that. If you want to look how you can manage and operate your Kubernetes clusters directly from the Azure control plane, even though if they run inside your um, data center, edge location, or in this case, this case, um, case on your lab device. That's what you can do here. And again, it's not just limited to that. We also have data services, SQL Server, um, IoT uh, scenarios, for example, for Azure IoT operations. Um, and so you can really go and try these things out uh, and make it your own. Um, again, this is like where you can find this. Um, but let's have a little bit of a look on how this now looks like. Here we are in the Azure portal, and you can see here, I called my lab kits Hyper-V 01, 02, 03, and 04. I have four of them right now in my lab. Um, but again, you can call them whatever you like. Uh, in, usually in the guide, we would call them lab kit 01, lab kit 02, and so on, uh, depending on what you want to deploy. Um, and then if you connect that to the Azure Arc, um, as showed in the guide, you basically will, it will show up here and you can basically start uh, managing your services here or your basically the operating system at least on your lab device, right? Which in this case is Windows Server uh, 2025. Um, and then you can also start using other Azure services such as update management, policies, um, run commands and, and the di different kinds of like security services and much, much more, especially also like interesting is monitoring and things like that. However, be aware that there might, depending, in, depending on if you enable these services, that there will be additional costs, right, with these Azure services. So just be aware of that, that when you do so, that you also generate some cost against your Azure subscription, um, depending on what you enable and how Azure Arc services uh, are charged uh, as well, right? So again, you have that in the Azure portal. So what we can also do is we can have a quick look on how this now looks locally. So if I connect using RDP, for example, to my uh, lab kit, I can see here uh, my different virtual machines. So this lab kit, for example, hosts a bunch of infrastructure VMs, such as the main controllers, some uh, Linux VMs, which simulate some sort of workload, some SQL VMs, uh, as well as some application systems. So I can really try different things and different scenarios here and try how they behave. Uh, I also have one, um, which is basically simulating a uh, Azure Stack HCI single node cluster. So I have a virtualized, um, nested virtualized um, Azure Stack HCI cluster here. So I can use that and basically test out Azure Stack HCI features again, which shows up in the Azure portal. So I can go and, and play around with that as well. Um, you could also create like multiple nodes, but in my case, I just do one node because that gives me a little bit more memory options here uh, as well. And then on my other one, for example, uh, I have here, for example, a AKS, AKS Edge Essentials uh, deployment to run my Kubernetes clusters on top of this uh, as well. So all that you can basically try out. And if we switch back here um, to the Azure portal, again, if I go into this, I would see basically my Stack HCI cluster here uh, listed under Azure Stack HCI. And I can see here my AKS clusters uh, listed here as well. Uh, if you have seen it, you also saw that I have some system center virtual machine manager there as well. So it gives me all that different possibilities to test this out uh, in a very lightweight without having any like physical, large physical servers, which are very, very loud. Um, and they're also not that expensive. So these little boxes, depending on what configuration you choose, um, they can cost like between five to eight hundred dollars, or you can go up like obviously much much higher. Uh, but there's a reasonable price, I think, for these devices, uh, which you can can then leverage. So last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about the Jumpstart um, uh, scenarios. So if you go to the Jumpstart website, we already have been there to look at the drop. Uh, there's also these Jumpstart scenarios, right? So for example, if you go to this. Um, Let's go very simple in this case. Again, you can see here we have different categories for different um, systems here or different scenarios, whatever you want to do. Uh, even if you run, want to run machine learning scenarios, right, with Arc enabled machine learning. Um, again, we talked about the IoT stuff you can do, data services and so on. But let's select a very simple one, which is Arc enabled servers. 
So you have different scenarios here. Uh, you, you get an onboarding guide, right? So if it's a, you created a Linux VM, for example, you get a on, very quick, simple onboarding guide, how you, how you can do that. Um, and then you can also go into the guide, how you can actually enable certain things, right? So if you want to test, for example, Azure policy with your Arc enabled servers, there's a guide for that as well. Um, Key Vault integration, for example, Microsoft Sentinel, Microsoft Defender. If you want to try out private link, how that works. If you want to test out the SSH access using Azure Arc, for example, which is a great, great solution, by the way. Um, all these different scenarios are very well documented and you have it very easy to actually go out and deploy and enable these uh, different things. So definitely have a look at the ARC Jumpstart scenarios. Uh, they will make your life much, much easier if you're looking at hybrid cloud and edge scenarios with Azure Arc um, and the Azure Edge platform. With that, I wanna say thank you for watching. Um, I hope this was helpful and I hope you will try out the Azure Adaptive Cloud Lab Kit and I hope I see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe uh, to the channel and like the video. Thanks.